Hi, I'm Lee Chantel from VivaLaVegan.net and today I'm here with Ruby Roth. She's a children's book illustrator and writer. Hi, Ruby. Hi. How are you? I'm great. Nice That's to good. meet you. I'm yeah, you too, person. finally. Yeah. Lovely. And what have you got here? Show me some of your books. These are... This was your first? This was my first. That's why we don't eat animals. Mm -hmm. A book about vegans, vegetarians and all living things. And you actually illustrate as well as write them, yes. don't you? I consider so myself what's your favorite? an artist before. Ah, uh, okay. Came first. I was going to ask that. What's your favorite um, page or piece in here that you did? Do you have one? Um, I have so many just because, you know, the process of painting something. Yeah. And the process in this book, which um, came out of a lot of research mm -hmm. about animals. Yeah. There's a lot of love yeah, poured into I'm each sure. and every one of them for mm -hmm. me. Um, you know, even even the sad ones. Um, it's a love process mm. that I went through in painting each one. And what do you use to paint? What sort These of materials? These are acrylics mm -hmm. on board. Yeah. And then how do you get them onto the page? They are scanned and then I do all the layout and the book design as well. Mm -hmm. The covers and the jackets and all the interior Looks spreads. Right. And then you had, um, that's that's why we don't eat animals, and then you've got Vegan is Love. Vegan is Love came out in 2012, mm -hmm. caused quite a media stir. Mm -hmm. And mutual friends of ours did your PR, and they yes. did a good job with that. Yes, they were great. Um, and this one is about the vegan lifestyle, mm -hmm. where the first one is more about the why, mm -hmm. the, why we don't eat animals, the yep. emotional lives, factory farming, the environment, endangered species. Uh, vegan is love is more about the how. How do we express our love and how far into the world can we send our love mm -hmm. through the choices that we make every day. So this book is about um, everything from food to clothing to entertainment mm. to how we spend our dollars, um, animal testing and the circus, racing, zoos. And there's such beautiful illustrations too, really. gorgeous. You. And so how long would one of these pieces take you to, depends on what you need to do, I guess. It but. totally depends. Um, I have a long process mm -hmm. of um, sketching for a long time and coming up with all kinds of different ideas and then comes composition and I'll create thumbnails, many different compositions. Mm -hmm. So by the time I get to the painting, it's pretty well planned out, yeah. but things always change. Um, so. It, anywhere from a couple of days for small pieces mm -hmm. to um, a week for a large piece and then sometimes when I decided to switch directions mm -hmm. mid-painting it would be a couple of weeks. Yeah. And, and oh, I can see koalas there. Yeah. We have them in Australia. Mm -hmm. That's great. <laughs> and um, so from the beginning when you start to actually having the book out how long would that take you? It's usually about a year process okay. and mm -hmm. then once I'm done, it's a few more months until um, the book is printed and mm -hmm. released. Cool. And um, we're, um, we've just, you've just launched your latest book, V is for Vegan. Yes, this is kind of a prequel to the first two, for yep. the youngest of little herbivores. This is an ABC book mm -hmm. and it's very light and funny and quirky drawings. Um, the art is a little more simple, flat mm -hmm. graphic. Um, and it goes through each letter of the alphabet. Yes, and it rhymes. And it, yeah, I love the poetry <laughs> in it. So why a rhyming one? Just because of the age? I thought it would be a fun challenge for myself. Yeah. Um, when you when you create kind of a restriction for yourself in any creative matter, I think it makes you think outside the box. So yeah, exactly. In order to get all the different ideas that I wanted to cover in mm -hmm. this book, I had to really work with language and concepts and how I could best cover everything and make it rhyme mm. and so the book is you know 26 veganism in 26 sentences yeah basically um, and with some clever wording mm -hmm. I was able to get everything in and um, tell me why you think so many people um, get in such a, a state when we talk about veganism being good for kids well that's a big topic. I could probably talk about that for hours, mm -hmm. but I think there's a few things going on. One is that I think most people really have no idea what they're eating or what they're participating in. Exactly. So it is hard to imagine the things that we know and mm -hmm. the things that we feel such an urgency to share with people. Um, another thing is that 
they may know, but most people who know are somewhat willfully ignorant. And I saw that in the controversy with vegan is love. That the best thing about the controversy for me was that people were actually admitting that what we do to animals is scary, yep. too scary to talk about. Mm. Um, but they were willing to impose that willful ignorance on their children, mm. which I think is completely unacceptable. And it did cause quite um, a bit of chaos in the media, didn't it? It did. It, it, one thing led to the other. Yeah. Um, but that, that's also good publicity for you, isn't it? It was great, and it opened a lot of um, doors and a lot of conversation. Mm -hmm. I got emails from so many different kinds of people, mm. military men who, oh, wow. who said, I'm not vegan, but I, I was really intrigued by what you said on mm -hmm. the news. Um, from moms to militant vegans, mm. I mean, just across the board, an amazing array of people, and the mm. hate mail too. Yeah, it was sure. like yeah. <laughs> amazing as well, yeah. just because I love that kind of stuff because it really reveals itself and mm. it shows us the invisible forces that shape our thinking yeah. about food, about animals, about children. And it's obviously doing something if you get, you're getting those massive different emotions like the love and the hate, like obviously it's affecting people, isn't it? Yeah. And, and that's I, what you want with art. I think that that's the great thing about being in the time that we are in mm. and it is both a privilege and a burden to mm. be in this time. Yeah because it is still new to the mainstream mm. and it's not like it's been around as a choice for a long time mm. and people are still ignoring it. Yep. People are still learning so we have to be somewhat accepting of, mm. of where we are at in the reality of introducing the idea to, mm. to the public. Exactly. And um, why would you, why do you think um, starting with kids is the best thing to do? Well, I personally think that kids don't get enough credit for what they can handle mm -hmm. um, psychologically, emotionally. When I was teaching art at an elementary school, mm -hmm. the kids were always really curious yes. about why I was vegan, mm -hmm. why I wasn't eating the string cheese that they were being yeah. served at recess, and that started <laughs> this whole process. Mm -hmm. And when I shared with them, finally, because mm -hmm. at first I didn't, and I kind of kept it to myself, but when I finally spoke to them, just gently but frankly, mm -hmm. Um, I found that they were so intrigued by yeah. what I was saying and these kids who had a hard time paying attention in class were suddenly yeah. you know, zeroing in and I realized that when we speak frankly to children they really pay attention mm, because exactly. hardly anybody speaks yeah. to them like that and gives them that mm. trust that they can yep. handle the truth. Mm. And I've never once seen a child overwhelmed by mm. the information in these books. It's exactly the opposite. They are excited mm. and eager to take part in something yeah. that helps animals. I mean, it makes perfect sense mm. to them. And it's an empowering thing, an empowering tool for them it as is, well. It is, and I think that's mm. so important. We across the world have experienced so much in the last mm. few years, economically, politically, mm. socially, that I think people are really searching for ways to take control. Mm. And Definitely. I think that veganism mm. is one of the most powerful political tools that we have. Mm to wield our effect in the public realm and I don't think there's any age too young to start mm. teaching kids how our choices affect the public realm. And everything does from kids like they're just so, um, they just want to absorb everything they can and they're just so open to everything yeah. and they, their little minds just want to take in everything and if you don't, you know, sway it to one way or the other, you just tell them, like you said, the truth yeah. and then they can make up their own minds. Yeah. Yeah, they ask powerful. questions and they start formulating their own morals and values and opinions and mm see the little lights go off yeah. and they raise their hand and they have an insight about the goldfish or their vegetarian yeah. ant or a garden or mm. anything and it just it's great to see the wheels turning mm. I mean Definitely. I truly believe we can change the world yeah. in one generation oh, yeah. by teaching kids how to love deeply mm. think critically and act responsibly yeah. that's kind of my motto for exactly my they're work. good mottos yeah <laughs> <laughs> and when did you become a vegan I'm in my 10th year mm -hmm. now yeah and why originally? Um, my now boyfriend Justin Wood, mm -hmm. who you just met, um, he's, a, he's an artist and he was the first person to point out that my morals and values didn't match my eating habits. Mm -hmm. And I was a political studies major, I studied American history, you know, considered myself a very conscious person, mm -hmm. I, I was health conscious, you know, um, a big salad eater, you mm -hmm. know, but I didn't connect the dots yep. until um, he came into my life.
life and I lived with vegans. Mm -hmm. and I went to UC Santa Cruz, which is like a mecca of mm -hmm. alternative thought and just hippiness in general. Mm -hmm. um, and it never occurred to me mm -hmm. until later. Sometimes you need someone to like say it to you plainly, don't you? And like, you know, come on, you're being a hypocrite. Yeah. You know, stand up and change it. And it's maybe good. that doesn't work for some people to no. receive that information, yeah. but it did yeah. for me. I, I think if you're open to it and if you're willing to um, evolve, I think that's always good. Yeah. But a lot of people aren't, aren't they? <laughs> well, it's definitely a defense mechanism that, mm. that goes right into place. And that's what's so great about working with kids mm -hmm. is their generosity of heart is so much greater. Mm. And they act, um, they react with to how we treat animals. Yeah with a much greater sense of diplomacy than adults do. Mm -hmm. Really think about it and reflect on it. And Ruby, your new book, how can people get it? They will be available wherever books are sold. Mm -hmm. um, my website is wedon'teatanimals.com. Mm -hmm. All over the world? All over the world. All over the world, good. Well, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you. And see vivalavegan.net for more interviews with inspiring vegans.